So here we are with Season 2, Episode 5 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Last episode was a very fan y episode, so honestly, nothing really much to say other than, man, poor Kyle. Uh, Kyle's gonna snap one of these days, and honestly, can't wait to see it. <laughs> if you guys like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I do have my full length up on Patreon and early access in the YouTube memberships. Other than that, let us get started. Oh, this is where... And trap that's working at right now. There's. <laughs> it's code AF. Weapon. First one tech. So it's a weapon. <laughs> Super computer must. Is that the thing that we saw in episode three? Oh. Is that? Are these like native creatures? Oh god, I'm getting a brain freeze. Daughter five? What happened to the dragon's daughter four? Probably on fire. No. Termites. Termites. <laughs> That's why you should have set it on fire. Well, you know, we needed a boat to get up here and you have a boat. Yes. There was no other choice. <laughs> like perfuma? The northern reach is nothing but snow and ice. What could they possibly be doing? They're that's an excavation. It's got a little blush on Scorpia. Alright, what are you doing, Scorpia? A space heater. I don't know, you could always just cuddle. Focused on your career. Trying to ask her out? But like in a different way, yeah, like like friends and not fellow employees. Yeah, you want to play some D and D? <laughs> oh, that's the. Is that the one that Entrapta brought uh, or got? Yeah, that's the one. Like a blanket? Oh. Non-Shira business. Uh-oh. Oh, Aw, she got a little, like, it's like mufflers for her claws. <laughs> Is she actually hanging out with them? I'm so cool. I'm Seahawk. So I assume those native ones are the one that's attacking the the bots. I, am cool, right? I, I'm, right? I think everybody's cool right now. We need results. <sighs> oh shit. I'm the boss now. Oh god, these two are just. Oh. Is that a lightsaber? What's. It? <laughs> See, look. Should have done that last episode. Maybe she did that because she knew that she could use magic. Now, if she tossed Seahawk out. <laughs> I think she does. <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, she is a scientist, you know? Gotta explore the mystery. Anyways, I'm just waiting for Catra to throw a ninja star at her. <laughs> the red ninja star, you know? Oh, here it is. Right on... Well, now you say she don't have the guts for this. Now she's, she will be eventually. eventually. <laughs> you have to take it away from her. Honestly, fucking 
Uh oh, this whole place is gonna crack. <laughs> shh, guys, shh, like, fucking get out the way! <laughs> and trap this over here, like, yeah, this is great! Oh my god. <laughs> well, you... well, you said she didn't have the guts! <laughs> oh, there you go. Sword's gone. Oh. Oh, that, it got infected too, since she did crash it into the snow and everything. Let's go, Gimma. Teleport us up there. Adventure! <sighs> I can't. I exhausted my magic in the sun. God, how much MP do you have? Like, 15? <laughs> I hope Kasha survives Shira, so I can wipe that smirk off her face myself. <laughs> she wasn't a can wait to survive. Oh, and Scorpius over here, like... A little sweat on Scorpia. Scorpiax, keep an eye on Adora. Oh, yes, yes. I will absolutely look after this sleeping, non-moving person. She went that way. Oh, right, because she's a little doozy. Scorpia just keeps losing sight of people. Well, you're not very cool being dragged up like this. I just wanted a moment alone with Kasha, but no, I'm stuck babysitting her ex, ex best friend. friend. <laughs> 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 oh, there she is. Because she's. <laughs> I'm a woman on the edge. <laughs> I've had a ship day today. Oh. I put in Catra's favorite number. Catra's favorite number. I get it. Yeah, you're trying to flaunt. I don't. Ooh. <laughs> I love like she can't keep her because like her, she has no grip on her. No, no, Shira. Just no, giant no bug thing. Oh. Yes, I'm stuck in the closet. Really stuck in the closet. Oh. No, it's just Seahawk. He's like, I he ran in here for hiding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Uno reverse. <laughs> okay, guys, you're just gonna fucking rip her arms. Understood. Oh. I do. I can't seem to break down a wall. Even when you're trying to kill each other, you can tell there's a real bond there. I wish you could see me as being worth it, Kelly. Oh. I know Kelly can see this. What a Marissa. But the research! Unless they're first ones. <laughs> they're trouble for having it. If they need something. What the fuck? <laughs> no. Good. 
<laughs> Alright, good for you, Seahawk! All right. Oh my god, they're just- <laughs> They're gonna just run out and fight! <laughs> She's running with her broom. <laughs> Did Seahawk just die? He runs right to Adora instead. <laughs> Meanwhile, Adora. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> Not exactly control, but. So, like, is Entrapta, you know, out yet? Like, or is she still. <laughs> Or she's still still pretty snug. Oh? Are you willing? What are you gonna do, Scorpia? Ah, the friends we made along the way. Whoop. Oh, wow, just immediately leaves. All right, well, off they go. So what, the first ones just made these bugs? I mean, I suppose the other bugs in the Whispering Woods are kind of the same, right? <laughs> I like that, even if they're on different sides, you know? I get you. Wait, hold on. You said a scientist never come back empty-handed. Peace. <laughs> well, you know, the one thing that uh, Scorpio wanted uh, for, for Catra to open up a little bit. And then with Scorpio saying, with Scorpio saying that, you know, Catra is misunderstood and, uh, uh, you know, she's not mean, she's misunderstood. Which, you know, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still trying to ponder on that one, but I, I am, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Go right. Actually, before I even write some notes, I wanted to look at the, uh, should have been in the beginning, right? Hold on. I just wanted to look at the, the, the writer to see if they were the same person, but it's not. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go write my notes and we will be right back to the center. You know, it kind of clicked in my head that with the portal technology and, uh, I was talking about Hordak and how if he can use it, right? And if he's just like taking over the world and, you know, covering the world with darkness, if that is his plan or whatever. I mean, Catra says it. So I presume that's like his plan. Uh, and, and if he has the portal technology, right, he could just fucking portal himself out to like a different world or whatever. And he doesn't have to care about the consequences that happen on, on, uh, on, on Etheria. Is that what it is? Ether Etheria? Or is it Etern- no, Eternia is something different. Okay. But, it didn't click in my head before that, like, Entrapta is interested in the portal technology as well, and Hordak has just told her that there's so many other planets out there, and so Entrapta's just like, wow, this is great, right? And especially if Lord Hordak maybe likes her enough that he might allow her to use the portal technology. And then it goes back to, like, what Bo was trying to say to Entrapta, like, Entrapta, you need to stop doing this. All these research that you're doing, you don't understand how much damage you're doing to e e Etheria. <laughs> is it Etheria? Am I? I seeing the wrong one? Hold on, let me go look at my season one note for my, yeah, Etheria. Okay. If Hordak allows her to take that portal technology, uh, to, to use that portal technology and go to other worlds and, you know, expand on her knowledge and everything, right? That has like the same touch with Hordak in that 
if she's able to help him with that and she can go out and travel to other planets and, and, and you know, continue on her scientific research, who gives a single shit what happens to Eter uh, to Etheria, right? She can go and do all this shit that she wants and that could damage Etheria for, for all she cares. But then if she could go into the portal and do something else, right? As long as she brings Emily with her, I think she'll be fine for the most part, right? And so I, I continue to wonder about like how would they continue how would they get and trap the to go back to their side because now i'm kind of like what well, you know in the first season i'm just like oh you know maybe they'll get her like by the end of the season or something but we're still going through season two and she's just continuously i mean she's pretty much snuggled in with the horde at this point and so i kind of have just given up the expectation that she's gonna go back to the horde because honestly again if entrapta is like a mercenary and you have to offer her something that is of interest to her uh, it, it, there's no way that the fucking bright moon rebellions have any chance <laughs> other than the power of friendship obviously but like can they get that through to her but they, they don't have that, that right like how can they compete all right how can the bright moon rebellion compete with the hordes uh portal technology that is way too fucking much <laughs> So like with this whole fucking thing, like it all clicked in my mind. I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm not really expecting Entrapta to actually uh, go back to, uh, to 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 be a part of the Bright Moon Rebellion anymore. Or you know, I would expect her to continue to stay all the way to this season, and then probably all the way to like season three, maybe, or even half of season three. And then you know, season four there could be a change or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just making a little speculations. Alright, so that was Season 2, Episode 5 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a pretty good episode. You know, after the last episode and uh, kind of like when they introduced Scorpia and all that, they've kind of just introduced her as, you know, this big hugger who's lovable. <laughs> She's not the brightest, but her attitude and her personality makes up for it, right? And uh, and especially like after last episode where they're just like, yeah, haha, it's Scorpia, big dumb. <laughs> I'm glad that they gave her this episode for us to be able to explore more of her character and all that. So uh, before we get into Scorpia, I do want to talk about Norden Reach just a little bit and how, uh, well, actually, I, I, I genuinely don't have anything else to say because I felt like I kind of mentioned it already with what I was talking about uh, in Trapta during my note writing stuff and that this is the, this technology that they found uh, that Entrapta found is going to be used for Hordax's portal technology. So we'll just have to see what that's going to do, right? I know that Hordax says y uh, you're you're thinking too small to Entrapta when Entrapta's just like you can transfer uh, items and weapons across the other side of the planet in an instant, right? So, but Hordax wants to do something else. So again, I'm still trying to figure out is he going to be like pulling hit from like other planets that he's taken over or something. I assume he has taken over planets before. And so maybe he's just pulling resources from that. Who knows? Uh, but if they do plan on using like the portal technology, like, you know, once they figure out how to put a portal right into bright zone, fucking uh, bright zone, bright moon. <laughs> I, I just combine bright moon and fright zone together. <laughs> but if they can put a portal right there and just land it right there, dude, fucking easy. Although I feel like it could also be like uh, a double edged sword in the fact that, you know, the, the bright, the rebellions can also go through the portal, but you know, it's all right. As long as they put it somewhere a little bit out of the way, but close enough to bright moon, you know, that will give the, the horde a really big advantage. We also get to see more of Seahawk as well. He is also uh, one of the other focus of this and we can see in, in the way that he's able to relate to Scorpia, right? The reason why he's here is because uh, Mermista canceled the, uh, their their plans and she's just planning on hanging out with her friends and she didn't invite him, which is just <laughs> very, much a Mer uh, very much a Mermista thing, but also like fucking rude. <laughs> like you had plans with him and then you fucking canceled it so you can go hang out with your other friends. Excuse me, although I'm still trying to figure out, like, does she, is, is she actually hanging out with other people? <laughs> or, like, is she just specifically don't want to hang out with him? 
yeah, yeah, give it a benefit of the doubt, right? Maybe she is hanging out with somebody else. Maybe it's Perfuma that she's hanging out. Those two uh, seems to get along great. <laughs> they they gel with, with each other so well. <laughs> but I, I, again, like maybe Marissa would rather hang out with Perfuma than she would with, uh, with Seahawk. Either way, still pretty fucking shitty to just cancel on somebody's plans just to go hang out with other people. And especially if they're not going to uh, make up for it. You know, like, how many times has this happened? And, and then Seahawk always talks about how, like, she keeps hanging out with her other friends and not invite him, which, you know, I, I get it. It's, it's a little painful, right? You want to be invited, too. But, like, how many times has she canceled plans on you just to hang out with other friends? Maybe this is just the first time? I don't know. But if that it has happened multiple times, and again, and she doesn't make up for it, you know, at some point, Seahawk, you just have to say, it's time to give up. <laughs> The other person obviously doesn't give a shit about you. <laughs> why even bother, right? Uh, why, why even bother? It's, it's, it's sometimes you just know when it's time to stop. <laughs> but because of this, and and also because like the reason why they brought Seahawk along with them, right, the group, is because he has a boat and they needed a boat, and so he feels like he's not even here to ha he's not here to hang out with them as friends. He's literally is just a vessel that they are using to get from one place to another. And that's why he says with uh, when he was talking with Scorpio, right? I feel like the only time they come to me is when they need me to do to do something. And you know that also kind of clicked in my head that that Seahawk and Scorpia has in terms of relations is that when they are hanging out with somebody, it's mainly for business and not for uh, for leisure. And then we've got Scorpia who is trying to be you know BFFs with Katra. The moment she saw Katra, she's just like, yeah, this person right here, I want to be her friend <laughs> immediately, right? And I was just kind of like, you know, I guess some people are like that. And so that's why I'm happy that in this episode, we get to see more of Scorpia and more of the way that she's thinking and, you know, her her efforts in trying to be friends with Katra. It's just an unfortunate thing that she met Katra during this time where Katra has feel like she has been betrayed by Adora, her lifelong friend. And so because of that, I would presume she has closed herself off so she uh, doesn't have to get hurt again, right? Because you can kind of see the way that Katra does it when she finds out that that red disc is what it can control Adora and she's just so fucking happy and she, when she sees like Shira fighting her friends and all that, her own friends. I mean, not Katra's. Well, Katra doesn't have friends, but... <laughs> But, you know, she sees Shira fighting her own friend, and she's, she's felt so fucking happy about that because she is the one who's laying down the hurt, right? She doesn't want to be hurt, and so she would rather hurt people first before they get to hurt her. And kind of goes with the way that she sees Scorpia, right? She closes herself off. She doesn't want Scorpia to be her friend, and but Scorpia is just continuing to be there for her. We see that she has saved Catra twice this episode, right? From the first one from being stabbed, sliced, per perhaps killed by the corrupted Shira, and then the second one is from being eaten by the by the first one's bug. And she is the one who ended up destroying the uh, the red disc, despite it not being something that Katra wants, you know, she's willing to put herself in danger just so she can have that upper hand on Adora. And, and again, again, right? Scorpia just wants to be there for Katra, but Katra, only, only thing in her mind is Adora. Same with Adora. The only thing that's, well, Adora has other things in her head, but the first priority, the first thing that she thinks of immediately is Catra. And it sucks, you know? We've got uh, Scorpia here who's trying to ask Catra, can we hang out, you know? Not like as employees, not as workers, anything. Can we just hang out as friends? And then we've got other situations where, you know, she wants to hang out with Catra, but Catra's just like, all right, go, uh, go take care of Adora. Or when towards the end, when she goes to grab uh, Catra, hey, Catra's just like, all right, you know, go find the sword. I've got a Dora. <laughs> and Scarf just so be like, cool, I guess. <laughs> I will say uh, they brought back drunk Adora again. And this time it, I, I, I just think it clicks a lot more for me just because uh, I I had a problem with like this whole drunk Adori thing back in like season one, episode six, just because I felt like it didn't really match the tone that I felt like they were trying to go for. Personally, I don't know, but like I, I felt like drunk Adora during that time was just a little, eh, you know, but here 
I, I really like it, especially when she starts going on like the little keyboards and she's just like boop, 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 boop. Like, <laughs> I thought that that was really fun. I'm really glad that Seahawk and Scorpia got to talk with each other, you know, despite them being on opposite sides or it, it, and all that, they don't really see each other as just a group, right? Uh, Seahawk doesn't see Scorpia as like the Horde and Scorpia doesn't see Seahawk as the Bright Moon Rebellions. They see each other as individuals and that they're able to relate to each other with the problems that they're, that, that they're currently feeling right now. And I like that by, by the end of all of this, they've come to respect each other. And you can kind of see the way that Seahawk looked at uh, at Scorpia when she was taking Catra and, uh, and, and trapped and running away, right? He's just like, yeah, you know, you follow your heart, you do you. <laughs> Yeah, and overall, I, I just, again, I, I like that and it just continues to show, you know, there are many different types of people within the the group and, you know, it's kind of like with uh, Scorpia and how she was led to the Horde because of the way that her family was being treated for the way that they looked, which also kind of goes to this part where Scorpia puts Adora down and she says, you may have left Catra, but someday she's gonna see that I won't, which I, I really like that, you know, like, hey, you're the one who fucking left her, right? You're the one who hurt her, and I'm gonna be here to let her know that I am, I am worth her time, and that I'm, I'm willing to be there for her, you know, as a real friend, as a true friend, unless she's in the closet, as she said before, <laughs> can't believe I'm stuck here in the closet with you. <laughs> I wish Scorpio was able to say this to Adora when she's not fucking drunk, <laughs> when she's not like this, right? A little floppy Adora. Cause like, she said this and Adora's just like, yeah, woo! <laughs> she's addressing you, the problem. <laughs> But uh, as I was saying with what Scorpia is, uh, you know, her family ended up going to the Horde, right? I would presume she is able to relate to Catra in that way. And that's why she feels like she has this bond with Catra. But hey, in the end, it all pays off. You know, her, her efforts to want to become Catra's friend. Well, Catra sees how serious Scorpio, uh, Scorpio, <laughs> Scorpio, Scorpio was, and she's willing to open up her walls just a little bit for Scorpia, right? Because if it was the Scorpia in the beginning of this episode, she would have not allowed Scorpia. Scorpia? Catra? Catra was the person in... It was the same Catra this got that these fucking names. Uh, it's in the same... Ep in the first... In, this, in the beginning of this episode, she would have not allowed Scorpia to share the blankets with her, right? She would have just been like, fuck you. <laughs> Get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> so I I like that, you know, perhaps Catra could at, at least feel that small little feeling, that inkling of friendship that she so eagerly misses, but also is very, very fucking afraid of. My final point is with Catra and how happy she is when she finds out that she has something that can control She-Ra. It's all Adora, essentially. And she's just... So she, she's just so happy. She she's like fucking gleeful, right? And and I think that's what Scorpia thinks. Right? Even when they're trying to fucking kill each other, I still see that bond. And again, Catra, first thing in her head, Adora, and, and the, this gleefulness that that Scorpia sees from Catra. You know, even if it's a little sickening, you know, like ooh, I can control her. She's not. She's mine now, right? She's my puppet now. It's still an emotion that she doesn't really see a lot from Catra. And uh, it it, it kind of clicked in my head while I was writing the notes and the fact that how she's happy that she's she's going to be able to control Adora and how like the moment she found out that, you know, we've got Adora now, we've got her sword, we can just bring her back to the Horde. We can just fucking drop her down to the Bright Moon while she's infected like this, like a, like a goddamn nuke, you know, like it, let's just have that problem deal with itself. And she was just ready to fucking go. She was just like, yo, Entrapta, all this shit that you've been doing, we're getting the fuck out of here, all right? We've already got what we needed. What she wanted for Adora to like control her was basically kind of like what Shadow Weaver wanted to do, right? When Catra caught Adora and Adora was on that black garnet, Shadow Weaver had planned to just wipe out her memory and hopefully just be able to just, you know, control her and do and make her do what she wants her to do. Catra, at that time, I'm not really sure if she particularly cared all that maybe it, it may be a little bit of an inkling because like if she was being controlled by shadow weaver like would she have lost her sense of identity as a and you know what catra wants is 
Adora, not some fucking person who looks like her, but isn't her. But the thing that really got Catra during that time was Shadow Weaver telling her that she isn't need anymore because Adora is here. And that's why, you know, Catra let Adora go because uh, all those other things that I said before. But yeah, <laughs> I don't, I can't remember if she showed a reaction to what Shadow Weaver said when she was going to control her mind. I know that she made a reaction when she said, when Shadow Weaver said that she's not needed anymore. Might have been both, but I thought that that was an interesting thing and like a bit of a connection to Shadow Weaver. Again, it's that feeling of like, even if you hate that person, unfortunately, you kind of grew up with them and like you might even have considered them uh, your mom if they were a quote unquote motherly figure to you, which I assume Shadow Weaver wasn't really, but Catra might have still seen her as it. Again, with the way that Catra continuously going back to Shadow Weaver, despite her being in jail and everything right she's still she is still taking something from shadow weaver so thought it was an interesting point and uh that's that's pretty much the end of my notes again thought this was a nice episode well i thought it was a good episode not a nice episode so can't wait to see uh what the next two episode has in store for us you know what is this finale that they have for season two considering that this is a rather short season but until then, if I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and I will see you guys in the next episode.